We'll try again once there's a better connection. I've just uploaded this video to my Instagram. I've been asked in the past, what are the best export settings for Instagram video? Now, I used to reply to people that asked me this question by saying that I would use a the bitrate encoding type as CBR and the target bitrate to be 20 um, with the codec as H264. But ever since I upgraded to this phone, the iPhone XS, H264 no longer works on this phone. We'll try again once there's a better connection. It's the most frustrating thing. Whenever you go to upload H264 file type video on a Apple XS, you're just gonna get that thing where it, like you put in all the information and it just says like the bar is uploading. Basically you have to change the file type to H265. Um, you can do that. We're gonna run through that right here. That should solve every single one of those problems. Now, today in this video, as much as this is answering that question, what are the best export settings for Instagram? I wanted to take you through how I created this edit because there was a little bit, little bit of interest. Did that actually happen? Yeah, that actually happened. <laughs> Let's get stuck into it. First thing that we're gonna do once you've got Premiere Pro open is we are going to set the frame size. Now often when you go file new project in Premiere, it's just gonna open up a 16 by nine workspace. I think I'm a little out of frame there. There we go. For those of you that are first time users of Premiere, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna set your workspace. So it's essentially in four or five, the biggest possible screen size or screen real estate for Instagram. What I tend to do, which I find really, really simple, is I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video, which is already a four or five video. The easiest thing to do is to open Premiere and just drag and drop a four or five video into Premiere. So let's do that. So let's say I grab this four or five video. This is just an old backflip that I've done at, you know, exported at the highest quality. Now I'm pretty sure this is an H264 clip. So anyway, it's whatever. I can just drag and drag and drop that in. See if you see there, it says, now this clip does not match the sequence settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. What we're gonna click is we're gonna go change sequence settings. So straight away, that's what I do every time. I literally drag and drop. If you guys want a clip, I um, don't know whether I'll give you this backflip clip, but there'll be a clip linked in the description of this and that's how you frame your workspace. A little bit of reasoning, a little bit of logic to chat through with this. I never really like to give too much away on Instagram. I look at Instagram video as either raw clips, so literally just, a single four or five um, clip from my GoPro or from whatever camera I've shot on. I feel like what performs really well from maybe more of a marketing perspective on Instagram is less editing. You know, I've been publishing videos to Instagram for the last four years and I have definitely seen ebbs and flows in how the content is received. I think what works best is bigger file for a uh, bigger size frame, so four or five. But I also think once what works best is like almost slower kind of clips, like raw clips, things which aren't like too in your face because if they're too in your face and you do too much in those first, like 15 seconds, viewers just swipe past it. They go, this is too much, I don't wanna digest into it, especially if they have sound off. So essentially, you know, you're trying to create something that people don't wanna watch and, and doesn't have any sound. <laughs> so you pretty much, you know, you're struggling straight away. So with this, you know, there's a few different elements that I want to talk about. The first thing is sound. So this is what I did. I simply jumped on to Red Bull Sound Supply. Um, I've been searching a whole heap of Red Bull um, tracks or using Red Bull Sound Supply this week because I'm working on a Red Bull project. Um, but for those of you that don't want to, you know, sign up to Red Bull Sound Supply, 
your alternatives are Epidemic Sound. I have an affiliate link. So if you use my affiliate link in the description of this, um, that's gonna give you, uh, it's 30 days free trial. So you can sign up to it anyway, but if you use my affiliates, I will get a small kickback. Or I also recommend Music Bed. Now, Music Bed, there we go. I'm an ambassador of Music Bed. So you can also use Music Bed to find music. I think they're probably my three like go-tos, which, and the reason why I'm using those three is because straight away, like you're gonna be able to jump onto either of these sites, be able to publish your video edits to Instagram and it's not gonna get flagged for copyright as provided that you've got a license. The next thing that I did is I went and looked at all my clips. I just literally looked through the files. I, you know, ho however I had stored them on my computer and I just auditioned them by pressing the space bar. Just had a look at the clips. Is that something that I like? I kind of give it like a pre-audition. If it's something that I think could be good, I'll drag it into my workspace here in, uh, this is my workspace here on Adobe Premiere. And, and you'll notice that I haven't really overdone the amount of clips that I'm using. I've only grabbed like five or six actual clips to put into this Instagram edit. Rather than just getting all of my clips and chucking them, you know, from my SD card or wherever I've stored them straight into my work, you know, work my workflow and chopping them up. I'm kind of like doing, you know, using like a sort of filtering process to just kind of look at the clips before I even bring them into Premiere and just audition them like this and just go, yeah, there's a couple of gold pieces in here. There's some nuggets. I will file through that. But the point of this edit is it's more just an aesthetic piece. It's, there's no, there's no real story to it. It's just, you know, some flowy transitions and just something that I want to publish on my Instagram just to flex my editing really. So I've used a number of different transitions throughout this edit. Sometimes I'm not a fan of that. Um, I, you know, I sometimes like to stick to a, a, a kind of like a rule of thumb where I will only use one, maybe two transitions in an edit. With this, I've gone crazy. <laughs> I'm literally going, I'm, I'm literally using like five different types of transitions in this, which is a little bit crazy, but you know what? I was like, you know, let's just give it a go. Now, generally, I'm not a fan of um, fade transitions. It never has never really sparked any, I don't know, excitement in me. I've never been like, oh, that was a cool fade. But with this type of edit, especially with this track, I was like, it's a flowy track, it's slow. So I don't wanna overdo it with like quick, jerky cut, you know, jump transitions or jump cuts. I, I wanted it to be flowy and the best way that I could do that was to literally like pull down the opacity. If you have a look in here, let's go in here. This top clip, I have keyframed in some opacity. So the opacity goes from at here, 100. If you see that the, if you look at that little dial, it dials down to right down at 25, no 50% there. So I've pulled it right down. And now as that, um, you know, as that clip has, reduced opacity, this one has gained opacity. So we've started from zero, this bottom clip, and it is, it's faded in. Um, and then also here, you'll notice that the opacity of the bottom clip goes from 50 right up to 100. So there's like, rather than just adding cross dissolves, I'm also playing around with opacity. So that's something that you can just keyframe in. Now, the one thing that I think I try to do as best as possible with this particular, you know, this opening scene was like, start with something colorful and engaging and, you know, emotion, like not emotion, but emotion, like something moving. So I'm literally running off a bridge towards a sunset and flying out into the water. If that doesn't catch your attention, then, I mean, God, you must have a really interesting life. So, you know, we go into the water, but as soon as I hit the water, um, I wanted to make sure that like I, I followed up with a clip that had some kind of flow. So I've used a wave. I was shooting with the dome on this clip and that is literally just a wave which comes across the screen. It wipes from left to right. And as the um, water subsides or as the dome comes out of the water, you'll notice that like 
it pulls down here. If I zoom in here and show you, this top clip has been keyframed as well. You'll see all these little keyframes and what I'm keyframing here is I've created a mask. If I click on the mask, you'll see the path. See how it just sort of, it reveals the clip underneath it. So I've got my drone clip sitting underneath and above it I have um, the wave. The wave is like the water is coming over the lens of the camera and basically as that's coming down, I'm just revealing the bottom clip. It's very simple, but I think it flows nicely. It's like, I'm just using the, you know, the general flow. One thing I'll note in here is that I've also added some opacity to the mask. You'll see that because if I didn't have these opacity um, keyframes on, it kind of just looked a little too harsh. So just to make it a little more, you know, flowy, I added the, the opacity changes as well. It goes from like 100% through. Moving into the third transition here, um, we have a zoom transition. Woo! Now the zoom transitions, I showed you this before, but basically you're creating two clips and then you are going right click, replace with um, After Effects composition. Once you've done that, that'll bring up your After Effects composition. You know, we're in After Effects here. Now you can see these aren't color graded, but basically like what I've got is I've got the Baker, um, Easy Baker Toot, which is or Baker tutorial, which I've just dragged and dropped. Again, I'll link his tutorial. I think you should watch that if you generally want to know how to zoom transition, watch his tutorial. That'll teach you exactly how to do it. And also it'll teach you, um, it'll, it'll give you a link to where you can get this, um, this uh, plugin. A little thing that I added to that transition, just to try and give it a little bit more pizzazz, um, is this, uh, second adjustment layer. So I just created adjustment layer, right click, new adjustment layer, and I added some motion blur. That little up there is just motion blur and it's, it says blur samples, 23. I just increased the sample size, it starts at eight. And it just makes it kind of flash in a little bit more. Audio. So you'll notice that with all these clips, I am adding these little audio sweepers. If I solo down here, Uh, if you guys want to get your hands on these specific audio samples, I've just downloaded a YouTube video. So the sample like quality is not that great, but it's effective for this kind of work. Link will also be in the description of that. Diving into color. So let's have a look at color. If you see over here on the right, we've got Lumetri color. Um, sometimes I keep it really basic. And what I do is I go into the creative area and I will filter through these creative looks and find something that I like. Sometimes that doesn't really help. So, you know, when basically Adobe Premiere Pro has all of these preset grades, color grades, LUTs that you can put on your video. Uh, and it's just basically like a matter of just going through them and then selecting it. I obviously don't want to select it, but let's go back to basic correction. And you'll see all I've done here is I've increased the contrast and I have in the creative area, I've increased the vibrance and saturation. Pretty basic. Um, oh, also, did I play around with curves? Didn't play around with curves. Um, that's it. I've really kept color grading minimal on this particular clip. Um, if we go to one of the other clips, what I do is I color grade every individual clip. So let's have a look at this clip here. Basic correction, there's a little bit more. Increase contrast, pull down the highlights, pull down the shadows, um, pull down the blacks. And then in the creative area, I've got an increase of vibrance and there's also some highlight tint you'll see there. I've pulled that into the blues and I've pulled the shadows. So I've played around a little bit with some tints. Um, Again, like color grading, like I'm not the best with color science. I, I literally just try and look at each clip and see how I can enhance it. I wanted to add a lot more vibrance to this because you know, that's, that's just how I wanted to do it. The last thing is when we export, we go file, export media. Now, this is where I was going wrong. For those people that have an iPhone, if you have an iPhone XS, um, you will need to make sure at the top here where it says format, make sure you click H265, H-E-V-C, H265. That's what you have to do. And then in here, we're gonna go to the basic video settings. Basically what I will do is I will go all the way down to the bitrate settings. And at the moment it says like VBR, one, one pass. That's it. Like I'm happy with that. It's 25 megabytes. I could change the target bitrate up to 10. Um, just to give it like a little bit more detail and then I would export it.
a little 30 second Instagram edit that you can share with your friends, reminisce on your holidays. Guys, if you have liked this video, or you've learned anything about color or export settings, punch the thumbs up button. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. The channel's all about travel, creativity, and inspiration. Go out there and make something cool, and I will see you guys in the, oh yeah. If you do tag me in the videos on Instagram, can you send me a DM? I prefer that you send me a DM and I can check it out rather than tagging me and my you know, tag content being a whole heap of random people's. Not random, your, your work. Um, it's just kind of weird, like having all my tags when I'm not in it. Anyway, just a little little summon, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next upload. Peace. And letting go. Guys, come on. And letting go. Okay. I mean, it's one, two. Doesn't matter. And letting go. Guys, come on. And letting go. Okay. I mean, it's one, two. You had a person.